Hi guys and welcome to this video on the partial lunar eclipse that happens on the 18th of September 2024. Thanks for joining me. The chart you see next to me here, that's a snapshot of the sky at the moment this eclipse takes place. So I'm going to analyze this chart to see what the planets are doing and how they'll influence you. And then I'll go through each zodiac sign from Aries through to Pisces to give you an idea of what this means for your sign specifically. So in terms of the technical info, this is a partial lunar eclipse. So this full moon in Pisces isn't going to com be completely blacked out. And in terms of the timings, if you're in North or South America, this happens in the evening on the 17th of September. If you're in the UK, where I am, it's the 18th of September, 3.34 in the morning. If you're in Central Europe, Africa or Asia, it happens later on during the day on the 18th. Then we have a solar eclipse happening on the 2nd of October 2024, and that's a new moon in Libra. So we're entering eclipse season here, and in terms of the astrology, eclipse season is very, very significant because it gives an insight into what the next six months are going to be like. So we have the equinox on the 22nd of September, the changing of the seasons. If you're in the northern hemisphere, it's the autumn equinox, so this energy will be available in the autumn and winter. If you're in the southern hemisphere it's the spring equinox and same thing this will influence you for the spring and summer moving forward so in this case we have the sun in virgo opposing the moon in pisces so the sun is your head it's what you identify with on a conscious level and in virgo it wants you to create order out of chaos and to be super grounded and practical the moon is your heart the way you feel in pisces it's very much about your connection to your higher self, the bigger picture, and what could be. And I feel this opposition and the fact that it's going to last for six months, this face-off between the reality of Virgo and the dream of Pisces, is remember the rules. Remember that microcosm equals macrocosm, as above, so below. And this is a prompt to really face reality and to make changes if the reality as it is for you right now doesn't satisfy you. And it's really that in-between place of the dream I have for my life and the reality of my life. And how can I work in the distance between the two in order to bring them together? So we've got um, this opposition then. Both the sun and the moon are at 25 degrees. Two and five is seven. Seven in numerology is the mind and creativity. So it's almost like you, you've got access to your higher self. You realize what you would like to be in the world, in your everyday life. And then Virgo, the sun in Virgo is immediately going to jump into action and is going to say, OK, well, these are the steps you need to take then in order to make that happen for yourself. Next to the moon, we have Neptune. Neptune is the water planet of dreams and intuition. That's at 28 degrees in Pisces, and that amplifies the access you have to your higher self hugely because Neptune is an outer planet. It's the water planet of everything that connects people to each other, that connects us to the higher realms, that connects us to our own subconscious mind, things that are beneath the surface. And it amplifies the moon in Pisces, which is already very intuitive and very... Um, tuned into the frequency of the higher realms and can download and receive messages. If you then look at the opposite si side of the chart again, the sun is there, obviously, but we also have Mercury, the ruler of Virgo, sitting near the sun, 11 degrees away from it. So technically it's not conjunct, but as far as I'm concerned, it's still close enough to make a big difference. And Mercury at 14 degrees in Virgo then says, I have the freedom to see myself as this spiritual universal being. And I also have the presence of mind and the practical know-how to translate that into an identity that I can live on planet Earth. Next to that, we have Vesta. Vesta is the hearth, the home, the inner fire, right? And that's 11 degrees in Virgo. So that is the universe saying, this is a good time to get real with yourself. And if there have been um, issues in your life that have caused you ongoing problems and that you haven't been able to solve, this is big enough and strong enough for you to have a major breakthrough and for you to imprint that spiritual reality of yourself onto the physical reality. So, you know, it's like that example of 
a writer writes, for instance. So if someone has the dream of being a great storyteller and having all this success and telling these wonderful stories, but has actually not written any books to back that up with, that's the kind of thing this full moon eclipse would address. It would say, okay, we recognize that you have this notion of what you would like to be, but now it's really time to do something about it. It's no longer time to daydream and to assess. It's time to put one leg in front of the other and to get to where you want to be. It's almost like a frustrated or strict parent saying, this is not good for you. Don't do this. Do this instead. So if you feel like you've got off track or you've procrastinated or you're living a completely different persona or identity or life than you set out to do, this is an opportunity to step back, to reset, and to say, I'm going to now start again in earnest. So, you know, if you had the dream of being a surfer at 15 and now you're 45 and it didn't work out, then this is the kind of thing that would come up again. And it would say, where did that go? Why was it discarded? It was the real you. Let's return to the real you, please, and let's not throw in the towel and instead build your reality the way you would like it to be. Then hopping over to the other side of the chart again, we have Saturn sitting 10 degrees away from the moon. So that is a conjunction. Saturn is structure and security. It's solidity, right? At 15 degrees, one and five is six in Pisces. It's this spiritual platform from which you can see your entire life as it is and you have this great not a hindsight but overview of the whole thing and you'll be able to make choices that are in your own best interest and then this is the thing that really really is interesting because the eclipses are always on a north node or south node right and when it's on the north node it's about pulling something in when it's on the south node it's about releasing something and here we have the moon and neptune nearby the north node which is at seven degrees in aries so the thing that's being pulled in is this energy of the ram aries the first sign of the zodiac the number seven again the mind and creativity it's almost like on a spiritual level what's being poured in is action fuel it's it's realization of this is who i am i can almost see myself as i'd like to be and now I'm downloading the energy and the power to actually make the changes, to take control of myself if I'm the thing standing in my way, or to bulldoze over obstacles out there in the world if that's what's stopping me. Ultimately, it's whatever is in your way needs to go. So it's not just harsh to you in the sense that it's saying, you know, get real and face reality, stop dreaming so much, but then it lends that power as well of well, actually, I'm going to help you to make this real. It's not about just being tough on you. It's about giving you the energy to overcome obstacles that you haven't been able to overcome in the past. And that's been a big theme, you know, for um, the last few weeks, I would say. But I really think it, it reaches its peak here. And again, with this being an eclipse, it's about finding greater... Um, recognition of your true self in your real life it's almost like if if um some sort of genius was working in insurance then everyone would treat that person as an insurance salesman and none of them would recognize the genius this is the opportunity to make the shift and again in that example i'll still do the insurance but now on the side i'm going to work with my genius and express it somehow so that in future that's what I'm going to be known for. That's what my life is about or my career is about, you see. It's about taking the dream and hammering it out into stone and making it real. The south node is at seven degrees in Libra. So the thing that's really not so important is the opinion of others. We've also got Black Moon Lilith and Juno and Venus in Libra. So that's actually a very beautiful time. Venus is the planet of love and beauty and creativity. 23 degrees in Libra. I think you can have good relationships at the moment, but I really don't think that relationships with other people are the top priority. I think they'll be naturally okay, and it gives you the time to focus on yourself and really what you want to be doing instead. So if you're someone who has felt dissatisfied or stuck in the current reality of your life, the next six months are going to be incredibly helpful in you hammering out a new reality. 
We have Juno at 13 degrees in Libra, so there's still real joy and warmth that you can experience when you connect to other people, when you work creatively, when you're around other people. But again, I think the real opportunity is to create inner healing and to take action. So I would try and balance it out between what am I doing and working to realize my dream and how am I managing my relationships, you know, colleagues, family members, friends, and even things that are my responsibility. I think there is real balance here during this time and the heavy lifting is being done internally, as in I realize that this is how I would ideally like to be and now I know what I need to do about it on my own. I don't need to ask other people to help me or to give me permission or to give me a leg up. Okay, what else have we got? We've got um, the moon. It forms a sextile with Uranus at 27 degrees in Taurus. Uranus is the planet of the unpredictable. Even the path, the its own path, is very chaotic and all over the place. So at 27 degrees in Taurus, it's again the spiritual truth, two and seven being nine, the end of a cycle, spirituality and completion. How can I take this complete picture and imprint it on something that exists in the physical world? So whether it's, you know, like those um, silk screen things, or I've got an idea for a book, I'm going to write it down or a pot or something, my life. It's building something either creatively or in the most literal sense to take the spiritual reality more seriously than the physical, to choose the spiritual reality over the physical in order to then change the physical. It's the opposite of saying this is my life is and I need to adapt to it. It's saying this is who I am and the world needs to adapt to me. I hope I'm making that point. It's very empowering. And it's very much a moment of ding, I get it, who I am, and this is what the world ought to look like now. The moon then also squares Jupiter 20 degrees in Gemini. Jupiter is about growth, good luck. In Gemini, again, it's in a sign that's ruled by Mercury, the communication planet, and it's able to connect with any kind of information, any solution, any way out. And it allows you to make sense of the things that are being downloaded and to implement them. Then we've got Mars at seven degrees in Cancer and also Hades at 14 degrees in Cancer. So the one thing that may feel a little um, challenging and difficult is that it's almost like this is a little too harsh. Uh, reality doesn't need to be this crystal clear. Maybe I should um, soften the blow by having a drink or doing something that changes my mind and takes me away from all this difficulty, which that's totally a choice and no one can say what's right and what isn't. But if you're able to tolerate the discomfort of this eclipse, then it's really going to lead you in the right direction. But it is more tough love than like gentle, there, there, you can do it. So try and align yourself with that and look at the end goal because during this eclipse, but also then for the next six months, and I hate to say it because it sounds so taskmastery, but like if you do the work, you'll have something to show for it at the end of it. It's not just torturing you, making you work hard facing reality and then just being stuck, right? No, it's facing reality and then changing reality as a result of your efforts. Let's see what else. The moon then also sextiles Pluto at 29 degrees in Capricorn. Pluto is about transformation and change. It's the phoenix rising from the ashes. And currently it's retrograded into Capricorn. It's at 29 degrees. And it's going to stay in Capricorn until the 19th of November. And then it goes into Aquarius again, where it will then stay for the next 20 years until 2043 44, right? So this is a three month period where Pluto has now retrograded into Capricorn, September, October, November. Two and nine is 11, master number of service. Capricorn is the sign of the worker, both in a physical earthy way, but also the inner emotional work. So you could really blame Pluto for a lot of this in Capricorn that's saying, you don't have to tolerate the structures of your life. If they no longer suit you, you can blow them up and build other ones. It's not about longevity. It's not about accepting things. It's not about enduring things that are uncomfortable. It's saying that if you really want to be of service to yourself, don't dream, but act. Don't feel like you have to endure. 
choose differently, change the environment, leave, exit, amend it. You have the ability to reposition things so that they suit your own needs. So if you look at it that way, you know, when, when the outer planets retrograde, it's not as significant as when the personal planets retrograde. So Mercury, Mars, Venus, those are important, right? Because the outer planets, they retrograde for about half a year. But still, Pluto being retrograde, the rebirth is much more likely to come from within and then to spill out into the world versus the rebirth of the world spilling into you. So it's the time for anyone who wants to manifest themselves as they truly are and to invest in themselves to live their best life and it will involve work and that's really an underlying message here via this um, full moon slash eclipse is that certainly during the next six months but probably and let me know what you think about this in the comment but probably for the entire life nothing good that you see in your mind is going to be delivered to you or handed to you free of charge, it's much more likely that you'll have to work for it and that you'll have to sweat and blood and sweat and tears. <laughs> so if this is kind of like um, being sent to military school in a way, if you feel like you're not resilient, if you feel like, oh, I give up too easily, I become discouraged quite quickly, this next six month period is really an opportunity to do the spiritual push up, so to speak, to do the legwork, to, to put the building blocks in place, to really build a more solid kind of adult life for yourself. That it, I'm just thinking as I'm talking, but that kind of thing is very, people will react to that kind of energy very differently in life. You know, like for instance, someone at 20 may be like, oh, I can't take responsibility for anything, nor do I want to. I need to run away and escape and take a flight and just disappear, right? That same person at the age of 40 may say, do you know what? I, I have had the experience of, of chucking it all and running off and that didn't really work for me so well. So maybe now I should do the work and face reality. And maybe I can think change things for the better if, what am I trying to say? If I recognize that I have to do the physical world as well as the spiritual work, otherwise I can fall on my face. It, it, I, it's reminding me of something I read recently that the title of it was the astrologer who fell in a well and it was a guy who was looking at the stars so much that he forgot about his physical reality and he fell in the well. So you can't do one without the other. And this is the opportunity to stop dreaming and to actually do something about your dreams. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I find this quite exciting. It's like tough love, but in a way that's actually going to work. And that will leave you much tougher at the end of this six months. You'll have grown up. You'll have done the work. And you'll be stronger for it. Okay, so let's see what else. Then the moon forms a, got the sex down with Pluto. It forms a trine with Pallas at two degrees in Sagittarius. Pallas is really wisdom and the wisdom of the direction I want to move into in life. One that is going to genuinely pay off for me rather than just be some sort of pipe dream that never makes a difference. So the, the, the thing about this then is you are... If any new ideas or plans emerge from within you around this time and you're really like, oh, I can't get the way to get to work on this. I'm going to make this happen. It's guaranteed here via this connection with Palace that this isn't a path that's going to harm you or that isn't going to pay off. If you're willing to embrace this, do the hard work, you are on a path that's going to lead you towards fulfilling your own mission in life. It's really significant it's part of the journey and it's the next building block block or the next plateau that you need to go up sorry to reach the top of the mountain um let's see then we have the moon forming a quincux with venus in libra so again relationships shouldn't bother you too much in the sense that they demand a lot of your time and attention also, if, you know, it's your birthday around this time and you actually want other people's time and attention, 
during this eclipse full moon i think it may be um a little unrewarding that if you're looking for a round of applause this energy doesn't isn't really so conducive for that see how you can celebrate yourself in a way but that again sounds very harsh to say to someone who has their birthday celebrate it on your own i'm just saying like usually if you're used to you know like decorations and balloons everywhere and 50 people it might be a, a few it might be fewer guests this time around because again the focus is on my journey my stuff not other people's then we have the opposition obviously to the sun and that's it okay so let's look at the other major aspect patterns at the center of the wheel then you'll see that there's a blue rectangle with the, one of the sides is open so if you kind of look at the sun at 25 degrees in virgo that trines up to uranus and taurus that then sextiles to neptune and the moon in pisces and then they trine pallas in sagittarius so if pallas then touched the sun via a sextile that would be called a mystic rectangle which gives you this greater connection to the higher realms <clears throat> but here one of the sides is missing so technically it's not a mystic rectangle but still all of these things influence each other and we've got both the earth signs virgo via the sun and taurus via uranus they connect and then spill over into the moon and um, neptune in pisces which is a water sign and palace and Sagittarius, which is fire, right? So it combines lots of different types of energy. And it says that if you can dream it, if you can think it, then of course, sooner or later, it's going to show up in the real physical world. It's the assumption that anything that you think, and it's the realization that the inner environment, of course, is going to show up sooner or later in your physical environment. And that's, uh, again, an insight into the spiritual laws of the universe but with that sort of certainty you really can't go wrong here because whatever you do if you decide to start a business during this time right that business might last five years or 20 years but regardless of the length of time it was important that you had that business so really pay attention to what is most meaningful to you at this point in time and what you can do about it because it's going to be the culmination of something that is meant to appear on your journey through life. Um, do we have anything else? We don't have a yod. We don't have a grand cross. We have a kite that becomes... Yes, we have a kite. Okay, so Venus in Libra trines Jupiter in Gemini and that trines the part of fortune in Aquarius and the descendants in Aquarius. So a big blue triangle is known as a grand trine. It's an area of talent. This one is in air, intellect, ideas, thinking, communication. So the big talent is I can assess what my actual dream is intellectually. <laughs> I can bring it back to my conscious self, not just in my dreams when I'm asleep. I can dream this while I'm awake. That's me putting my finger on it and that's what I can build with so the identification of the dream and then we've got two sextiles sitting on one of the sides connecting Chiron at 22 degrees in Aries Chiron is the wounded healer 22 is the master number of the builder and Aries is do it yourself DIY right so pay attention to your own hopes and dreams then build them in order to heal past disappointments or to heal your life in the sense that the affirmation, I get what I want, becomes much more real and accurate than the affirmation, I don't get what I want. And that's like training for life. Because then in future, if you ever want something else, you're going to be like, of course, I have to work for it. So this is, this is a good one for anyone who has been a little spoiled in life who's had things come to them and who's kind of grown to expect that anything good, of course, it should just come to me. So it's kind of like hey, Virgo saying, no, no, no. Sometimes a little bit of work is required. <sighs> yeah, and it, it, re, you, harsh reality can be harsh, but you're strong enough to face it. And sometimes by being a little bit 
harsh and saying, don't just dream, do, is actually far better for the actual quality of your real life. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else that I missed in here. No, don't think so. Okay, so let's look at each sign of the zodiac then, and please watch them in this order for your rising sign first, then your sun sign, and then your moon sign. I used to do the horoscopes, <clears throat> excuse me, for the sun signs first, then the rising sign, and then the moon sign. But in my years doing charts for people, reading their horoscopes, I noticed a lot of the time people identify more with their rising sign than the sun sign. So I want my horoscopes to reflect that. So please, and again, I'm repeating it, sorry. Rising sign first, then sun sign, then moon sign. Okay, so Aries, for you, this eclipse happens in your 12th house. 12th house is spirituality and spiritual strength. So that you discover, or Aries, you may find that you discover yourself on a subconscious level and find a new directioning, a new direction opening up in your life as a result. So subconsciously, the dream comes through and says, do this with it, go that way. If you follow that, again, you're pretty much guaranteed to succeed rather than fail. So for you, Aries, this is very much the energy of the fool in the tarot. Some new energy is conceived, comes into existence. And for you, it's the beginning of a very, very meaningful journey. Could even be the most meaningful journey in your life. Taurus, for you, this is in your 11th house of hopes and dreams, connections to other people. You may discover what you really long for and dream about in life. So if you haven't um, had a notion so far, it may become crystal clear. So if that comes through, please do take it seriously. And take it seriously despite what your environment says or what your other people, what other people around you say. If a dream kind of makes itself known to you, it's there for a reason it's important. So Taurus for you, it's an opportunity to understand what and who you love and to take action towards solidifying those types of connections. And it's the certainty of self. I know what the dream is, I know what I love, so now I can go out and build it or acquire it or reach it or bring more of it into my life. Gemini, for you, this eclipse happens in your 10th house of work and career. The way I think this shows up for you, Gemini, is that you, re you remember what you initially set out to do in your working life. And you're going to have concrete ideas around how you can change and make that a reality for yourself. So evaluate where you are in your working life now, what originally you wanted to do, and again, how you can bridge the gap between what is and what you would like to be. So for you, it's the opportunity to earn a living doing something that you love to do and thought was impossible and to pluck that option out of your own subconscious and to say, this is what I want. Cancer, for you, this happens in your ninth house of higher education and travel and broadening your horizons. So Cancer, for you, this could be an intellectual exercise where your own beliefs shine through and overpower what you've been told or what you've been indoctrinated by. So Cancer, for you, it's an opportunity to, to decide what really matters to you in your life and what direction you want to head in. And you'll clearly see the one that seems most fulfilling and most meaningful. Leo, the eclipse happens in your eighth house, which can represent organizations, things like inheritances, the government, taxes, institutions, legalese, red tape. So for you, you'll understand how you can amend your own role or your own place in an organization or institution like that, and even how you could operate independently if you chose to. So if you're trying to either connect or disconnect or amend your relationship, with any group or community of people, this is really the moment to break free or to make your pitch or to make an announcement. It, you're really able to change the way you operate within that environment. Virgo, obviously this is um, significant for you because the sun is in your sign at the moment and that's why the moon is going to eclipse in your seventh house of relationships. For you, this is really significant in the relationship with yourself because you're going to understand how you've been standing in your own way and how the negativity in your relationship with yourself 
has spilled over into your relationships with other people. So what you discover is what doesn't work and you find a healthier alternative. So an upgraded version of yourself, so to speak, you're wiser and more positive because again, you have this realization of this is what I do that doesn't help and isn't constructive and I can find a better way. So yourself first, then other people follow. Libra, for you, it's in the sixth house. You're going to discover how you can manifest your own ideas and build them into reality. So maybe you have an idea that's very simple, like changing a room in the house and repurposing it, like taking it and turning it into a gym or a meditation room. Or if you haven't worked creatively in a while, maybe just to give yourself the opportunity to write or draw or to express what you're feeling. If you get that kind of... Um, vibe, please give into it and draw something or write something because the product, the thing that you actually come up with, may be a bit of an eye opener as to, as to what you really want in your daily life and what you want your routine to look like. It may be delivered via your own art form, your own creative output. Scorpio, for you, the eclipse happens in your fifth house of what you love and children and romance. You understand who and what is most important in your life and how you can be more present in the moment and actually live it rather than dream about some other life that's ideal and treat this one as if it's your provisional life. You can put an end to that. So you'll be able to ex exit fantasy and to emerge into action most effectively of all of the signs. So the question for you is what do you want to change right now? And really, Scorpio, you really nail this, but I think that's accessible to everyone. It's like, how can I flip the switch from fantasy mode into action mode? I think that's so important for this um, eclipse. Sagittarius, for you, it's in the fourth house of your roots and what you, makes you feel like you belong. So you're able to discern what has worked best for you in life so far and what has worked be felt best for you in your closest relationships and in your work, your career. So the question is, what has felt like home in the past and how can you return there? Or even better, how can you recreate something that you love from the past or build it or create it for the first time even? So Sagittarius, for you, this could be as simple as a pet or as complex as kind of designing your own house with a view of then actually building it in earnest. Capricorn. For you, the eclipse happens in your third house of communication, perspective and ideas. So for you, you're going to find yourself in an unexpected place of certainty about what happens next in your life. You know that overview of everything going on I mentioned earlier? You're going to feel super solid as in this is my life as it's been and this is what I want to happen with it. Crystal clear. So you're going to ask yourself, where are you going? What are you learning and what are you going to do in future? All of that is going to make total sense to you, Capricorn. Out of all of the signs, I would say you have the greatest conscious overview of what your subconscious wants, what your consciousness wants, where you're actually at, and how you can tie up all of those different realities so that they suit you. Aquarius, for you, the full moon happens in your second house. So if your options around finance or income have remained the same for a while now, they've been, you know, pretty routine, you're going to discover a way to create your own separate or a new income for yourself if you've considered changing your job the desire towards that is going to increase over the next six months urging you to create as much freedom in your life as possible particularly through your income and your career so if you're an aquarius who's wanted to become self-employed expect that to become more and more urgent as time moves on Pisces, for you, again, obviously this is really important because it's the moon is in your sign of Pisces. So similarly to Virgo, you're going to find you, you have access to your own subconscious and what you bring into your relationships that, that you may not be aware of or that you haven't been aware of in the past. So it's the opportunity to detox from any kind of negative dynamics that you've lived but haven't really been able to identify so they were in the background. So you become aware of those and by recognizing them, you're able to change them. So it's self-awareness equals change. 
Yeah, and the axis of Virgo and Pisces, Virgo being Earth, the real physical, and Pisces being the ethereal, that's what this eclipse is all about, is really overcoming your own reluctance to just live in a fantasy world, and it coaxes you into the real world and asks you to take action and to work to make your dreams a reality. They're going to be far more satisfying when they exist out there rather than just in here or in here. Okay, so I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. To draw up your birth chart, I just need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, then please order a chart rectification with me. That's a process where you send me 10 or more significant life events that have happened, and I can actually work out your time of birth. Once I have that, then I can draw up your natal chart, and it shows me a great deal about you, as in your default setting, what you're moving towards, uh, life purpose, vocational aptitudes, income, family, spiritual development, friendships, health, anything at all. So if you do have any questions, please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. And subscribe for more videos. Check out some of my other videos, the um, monthly horoscopes for September. I'll be filming the ones for October soon. And um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful time during this full moon and a wonderful six months that are really, really productive and rewarding for you. So I hope you have a fabulous time, all the best, and I'll speak to you soon.